Hi Jose, my name is Gwendolyn. I'm going to be looking at your essay today. First of all, thank you so much for getting the Sentence Guide course. Really great to see that you are interested in improving your English writing and that you're open to getting some feedback on the areas that you need to focus on before you take the IELTS exam. Uh, before I start uh, looking at your essay, I wondered if in the next email you could answer three questions for me. One, can you let me know if you've taken the IELTS exam before, and if so, what score you got? Two, can you let me know if you have a date uh, scheduled already to take the IELTS exam again, and what score you need or hope to get? And then three, just let me know maybe why you're taking the IELTS exam. Do you want to immigrate somewhere? Do you want to further your education? Um, whatever reason, um, that would be really useful for me to know. So if you can let me know those three the answers to those three questions, um, that will help me know what your goals are and it can help me ensure that I help you reach those goals. Um, so that would be really good. Um, let's go ahead and look at your first essays, your task two on doing an enjoyable activity and I'll try to answer some of your questions that you started off uh, with as well. Um, you know, to begin with, don't worry about um, it being slow using the acronym like anything else in life when you first learn how to do it it uh, requires your brain to think in a new way and you do do it slower uh, but eventually it will become so second nature that you won't have to think about it like you said just like a reflex eventually it will be just like walking uh, when you were a young baby it was to all your thought and concentration to walk uh, but now i don't know you could probably do it in your sleep um, second question, do you really need to speculate about the future? Um, yeah, you know, a lot of, there is a variety of writing that we have to use in the English language and one of them is um, speculative language, um, but there are some of the essays in the course that talk about, particularly in the task one essays, that talk about past tense events, uh, but this particular essay isn't, uh, not really speculative about the future it's really just a kind of um, an, an opinion essay um, about a fact that's going on now so um, yeah we have a variety of essays for you to do and all of them I think we are feel are very um, of the example of the types of essays you'll actually see on the arts exam so that's what we're just helping you practice um, your answers here on the test to, I, thought, I thought you had a good idea uh, and good examples, so I thought you did a good job with that. So, I thought you, um, I struggled a little bit with your coherence and your cohesion here, Jose, but um, overall it's a good essay. Let's go ahead and read through it. In recent decades, many researchers have studied the benefits of fun to a child. Indeed, to my mind, there is now convincing facts to prove this premise. In this essay, I shall examine two enjoyable activities to prove a child's skill and creativity rather than reading. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what you were saying in this last sentence. In this essay, I shall examine two enjoyable activities to prove a child's skill and creativity can better be developed uh, through fun activities rather than reading. Um, just need some exclamation or explanation in between there. To begin with, good, good transitional phrase. Playing on game consoles can help improve interpersonal skills that reading cannot do. This is largely because this is largely because there are so no of there are certain skills that need first-hand experiencing, like talking to the opposite sex, proving your point by discussing with other people, and boosting your confidence. A recent study by the Department of Social Welfare and Department, we've used department twice, I think I would just take that out, you could just say a recent study by the Department of Social Welfare, um, uh, where's your verb there? stated that more than half of the children who regularly play 
role playing games like The Sims on PlayStation can easily deal with other people compared to those who don't play on game consoles. Therefore, playing video games helps develop certain aspects, plural, of a child that reading often neglects. Good, I thought this was a really good idea, um, Jose, and great example to back it up. Um, it's not uh, an idea that I've seen before, but I think it works very well. Let's look at your P2. Secondly, I'm not a big fan of the word secondly. I would like to see some different transition phrases. There's a lot more you could use here to get higher points. You could say something like, furthermore, children reap many rewards by adding extracurricular activities such as sports. Good, good vocabulary there, extracurricular and reap, good vocabulary. This is due to the fact that the youth learn the essence of competition, improve their cognition and discipline, the sport and calculate to its players. Let's look at this last bit of this sentence here. So this is due to the fact that uh, you don't need the, the in front of you. This is due to the fact that youth can learn the essence of competition, improve their cognitive discipline uh, through sport. And I've taken out this phrase just because it's hindering your coherence and your cohesion. If we think about the normal sentence structure of an uh, English essay, it's subject, um, verb, and object. So the object ends here, um, you know, through sport. The inoculating its players, um, then it adds another phrasing, which just adds some confusion to what you were trying to say. For example, the Department of Education and Children's Services noted that a basketball player can simulate many possible scenarios for the ball to be shot on the ring. Such calculations prove that playing sports improve a child's mental capacity and unconsciously improves finesse, problem solving skills. In conclusion, I strongly agree with the notion that doing a delightful activity improves skill sets and imagination. Delightful. I like that word. Good. Uh, calculations here was another good vocabulary. Um, good. Great uh, vocabulary range, um, Jose. I thought your ideas and your examples were both very good. Um, you might be struggling with them, but I think with more practice, they will become easier to generate in your head. Um, your, your weakest point was your introduction. I kind of struggled with some of your coherence in your cohesion in there but I think that will also get better over time as you say in your quote luck is a dividend dividend of sweat the more you sweat the luckier you get um, I like that good let's go ahead and look at your um, second task family communication okay Jose I read through your second task too again I thought you did a really good job with your ideas and your examples to back up those ideas um, I've often wanted to see someone use this idea of technology about um, how appliances um, make our lives easier and can increase the family bond time. But I have do been doing this job and read these. I have read these essays for a very long time. I, I must have read thousands of these essays. This particular essay, and you're the first one to use that um, idea. So I think that's really good um, that you're using some different ideas that I haven't seen before. And um, so I, I don't think you're having issues with that at all. Um, there's just a few things with your coherence and your cohesion. I don't know if it's due to your grammar, I think, or the word choice that you use. It's not making the essays as fluent as they could be. Um, and I think that's your main issue. You use a good range of vocabulary. It's just a little bit on this coherence and cohesion. Um, so let's read through it. with constant modification to technology and constant changes in society. So you're a little over the word count here, not much, but uh, I want to try to make your writing a little more concise. So here I would say, with the constant modification to technology and changes in the society, just to take out the constant, so we're not using the same word twice in a sentence, Questions to whether communication is stronger or weaker is an interesting topic. 
Um, I would almost be inclined here to also add the words whether communication is stronger or weaker between family members. Uh, it's an interesting topic. I believe that interpersonal action interaction is more intimate nowadays, mainly due to the things that make it easier to communicate. So here I would also like you to add that summarizing sentence. Uh, this essay will look at this issue using examples um, to demonstrate points and prove arguments. So important to include that uh, that sentence part of the acronym into your introduction. Firstly, here again, I'm not a big fan of firstly. I would try to say something with, um, uh, on the one hand, maybe. Uh, with the advent of social, with the advent of social media, proves the internet makes family bonding tight. I can't say that it proves yet because we haven't given your examples. You could maybe have said the word proves towards the end, once you've given your examples to back that up. But you can't say proves yet. Um, firstly, uh, you could just say, firstly. The advent of social media and the internet makes family bonding tight. <laughs> the reason for this is that social networking sites like Facebook, Viber and WhatsApp are now economical, easy to use and more efficient in transmitting messages. And then here I would take out due to its affordability because what you're talking about is the economic those three things, not the necessarily the affordability. And you've already talked about affordability by saying economical. So taking out that phrasing will make your sentence more concise, um, which we need to do to, one, reduce the word count a little bit, but also to help with the coherence and cohesion. Um, people, I don't know, don't really need this sentence in here. I might just to have a bit more word count and to stick with the acronym a little bit more. Let's go straight into your example. For example, countries like the Philippines and its neighboring states enjoy the above applications because they're affordable and sometimes free of charge depending on their internet service provider. Therefore, by being able to use the above media, families uh, can, not will be able to, can connect more and make uh, connect more and connect more and make transpersonal interactions uh, worthwhile. Here you can say furthermore, additionally, something else besides secondly. Technology does not only make connecting people easier, it also it also helps increase, I don't think you can say provides increase, it doesn't really work there. It also helps increase the amount of time people can interact. This is because appliances nowadays caters to families whose parents um, uh, this is because appliances nowadays cater uh, to Families whose 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 both parents work similar. No, we don't need this word at the same time. And I actually don't think we need the rest of that. We could just say this because appliances nowadays cater to families whose both parents work. Full stop. Full stop. And take out that phrasing. It just is hindering your coherence and your cohesion. Recent consumer studies conducted by Samsung have shown that household items, comma, like the microwave or the washing machine, comma, uh, increase up to two hours of bonding time between a family. This fact shows that technological advances increases the time spent between family members, therefore improving familial interaction. To conclude, I believe that it is untrue to say that exchanging information in the family is less this is because people have aids to make family interaction easier and meaningful. Great conclusion there, Jose. Really good. I thought these were, for your first essays, very good essays, Jose. Um, 
a little bit on the coherence and cohesion, and that's what I want to work on with you the most. Um, but your ideas and your vocabulary are very good. Uh, and very few grammatical uh, issues, only a few. Um, so what I would like you to do, Jose, is I want you to create what we call an error list. This is a list of the things, um, the mistakes you got wrong throughout these essays. I then want you to correct these two essays with the suggestions given. Watch the next set of podcasts. And then finally, I want you to write the next two set of essays. Then I want you to get back to me in one email your um, your error list, your corrected essays, and your two new essays, so that I can have a look at them all together. All right, I think you're doing a fantastic job. Um, you know, keep up the sweat, and uh, I'm sure you'll get luckier. Okay, it will become easier. It will become more, more natural for you, uh, and eventually we'll start timing you to see where you are on the timing side. All right, Jose, good job. I look forward to seeing you next essay soon. Bye for now.